So today we're going to look at how to flash one of these smart quad switches. Um, I'm going to use ESP Home, you might use Tasmoda or some other firmware. Now these ones are a bit of a pain. Um, the old versions you used to be able to use to your convert on, which is a software only. Um, this one we're going to have to crack open uh, and actually flash it with wires. I'll show you the procedure. So first things first, you're going to install ESP Home and Home Assistant if you haven't already. Then you're going to go make an entry for this new device. I've called mine front switch. Um, luckily I already done one of these before, so I had all the details to put in here. Um, I can give you the code, but it's pretty simple. Basically you're just linking up the switches and the relays with various IDs and telling it what you want it to switch. So it has some um, human readable names in the interface. So that's all done here. Um, so you save that when you're done. You could upload to the device that was already connected, but it's not. We've got to flash it. So what we're going to do next is we always do a validate. That's just going to make sure that we haven't screwed up anything. Uh, it would give you an error message if you had, but that looks good. Configuration's valid. Um, so the next thing you want to do is actually compile that. So over here we've got the compile. And that would go ahead and uh, create you. And that's going to create you a flashable firmware binary. Should be no error messages, and down here it will say success. Uh, so what you want to do is download that binary somewhere helpful, and you're going to then flash that binary file to the device. So let's take a closer look at this, the Deta 6904HA. Um, as we saw before, it is a quad switch, smart switch, and it will have these points on the back. So Red and a black is obviously active and neutral. Then you have your four outputs controlled by a relay. You can see the specifications there of the load that's allowed to be there. 10 amps, I believe. Okay, so to get an, in there and do the flashing, we have to actually pull this apart a little bit. And that's going to start with those four screws. I'll go ahead and do that and uh, show you what it looks like inside. Okay, so there's not too much to go wrong there. This bit just basically falls off once you pull out the screws. And then this board, you'll have to just leave your screwdriver under the edge or something like that. Um, but be careful um, just not to bend those pins there. So this little board is connected into that board through those eight pins that go into those black slots. So that bottom board is the relay component tree and you don't need to do anything with that. This top board has those uh, contacts for the buttons and that blue thing there is what you're going to need to work with. That's the ESP8266 chip. It's packaged up as a TYWE3S. And I did bring up the pinout so we can see what we have to do here. Okay, so as you can see, exactly the same thing. And you're going to need all of those pins that are indicated there. The ground, the 3.3 volts, GPIO0 and TX and RX transmit and receive. As you can see, there's not really an easy way just to shove wires onto there, so it's going to need you to do a bit of soldering. Oh, and if you don't have one of these, you're going to need it. That's a flashing device, this FTDI flasher. Um, basically, you're going to plug it into your computer that has the firmware on it that you're going to flash. And then these wires down this end are what you're going to connect in here. Um, now, it does make it slightly easier that a couple of pins here are actually ground. So these ones here, the third one's in, the top and the bottom are both ground. You can also put five volt apparently across these end pins. Either of those would be, except a five volt. Uh, I don't have a good five volt power source, so I'm just gonna put 3.3 volts on the VCC there. Uh, and then we're gonna um, connect GPIO zero, which you need to hold to ground when you boot up the device to get into flashing mode. And then the TX and the RX, the transmit and receive pins, will go to the flashing device for serial transfer. All right, so when you finish the soldering, it's going to look a bit like this. All right, um, so the FTDI flasher, I've got the orange is 3.3 volt, the blue is ground, dark brown goes to transmit on there, so receive on there, and for the beige one, it should be receive on the FTDI and transmit on there. So not the world's best soldering job, but 
uh, we're going to ripple those wires off as soon as it's flashed anyway. So what you do is plug this FTDI in. I haven't got it, the USB on it, but you plug it into your computer. And as it's turning on, you just make sure you've got GPIO zero, which is my red wire here, grounded. So we're just going to hold on there. If GPIO zero is grounded, when we start up, it'll go into flashing mode, uh, and then we run the rest of the process. I'll show you in a minute. All right, so this is what it should look like when it's all plugged in. All the lights come on there. Got my USB there. Um, I use this tool called the ESP Home Flasher. There's plenty of tools to do this job. Um, when it's plugged in, it gets a serial port. I selected my bin file, the firmware binary that is, and I hit the flash button. So it takes just a minute or two. It erases the flash. So all that grid connect data stuff gone and then it will replace it with the ESP home firmware. All right, so that worked. Um, as you can see in ESP home, front switch device is there. Uh, we'll go check out the logs for it. And we should see in just a second. Drum roll, please. There you go, everything's set up. So once it's in here, we don't have to muck around with cables anymore. I'm going to ripple this soldered wires off, reassemble this, and then get it installed. If I ever need to update in future, I can come into ESP Home, fiddle with my settings in the editing, as we saw before, and then when I'm finished, I upload. As I mentioned before, you might find it's a good idea also to do a validate um, there. You can manually compile, all the options are there, but really all you need to do is edit and upload. Piece of cake.